That sounds like a cowbell going off in the background. Moo. That's what this show needs. This show needs more cowbell. No. That was my Christopher walking impression. I have a feeling if I keep doing those, you're going to be walking out. Nah. <laughs> and welcome back to another edition of Cooking Chris's Dishes with the Good Old Boy, where we're cooking up dishes straight from RecipesThatCrock.com, which is my beautiful wife's cooking blog. Bless you, Aki. My dog just sneezed. <laughs> we have over 500 recipes and rising, and today we are doing a one-pot, crock-pot, chicken dinner. That's right, this is one dinner in one pot, and it will feed your entire family, and it is absolutely a delicious. And it goes like this. It's real simple. You need chicken, because this is a chicken dinner. And we have, you're supposed to be using about three to three and a half pounds of boneless, skinless chicken thighs. My wife found a big pack of chicken on sale today. And so we used half of it for the final product and half of it here. Eh, somewhere around three pounds if it's a little light. You know, right. it's chicken feathers. But also, you will need a pound and a half of taters. Um, depending on what kind of taters you use, we buy the little, um, what are these, the baby... Um, Those are baby, baby golds. Yellow or baby Those are gold. baby golds, but we use reds all the time. Yeah, we use reds, golds, whatever you want to use. And if you don't want to buy the babies, you can chop up bigger ones. Yeah, if you want more work. <laughs> dude, I'm telling you right now, one, I say dude a lot, and two, <laughs> just go buy a pound and a half bag of potatoes Give them a rinse in a colander, and your potatoes are pretty much bite-sized. Some of them are a little bigger, but these are going to be so tender, you're going to do is cut them in half. You also want a bag of already washed uh, baby carrots. Yes, and we then... like the, if we're going to go with baby carrots, mm -hmm. I particularly like the, the kind that are called sweet petites, because they just cook up better. Yeah. I think. They're sweet and... They're petite. No, they're petite. Yes. And they'll be very tender at the end of this. You could also just get... Six, eight regular carrots, peel them and chop them up too. Again, more work. Exactly. We're going the easy yeah, route. We're going to go easy with this, quick with this. If you got big carrots, chop up big carrots. If you got big taters, chop up big taters. The only thing big here is my appetite and these onions, and we'll get to that. Because you need two onions that you simply quarter up. That's about like as much work as I do with this. We like the sweet onions. Yeah, go sweet with this. Get a little sweet flavor with the rosemary, which, by the way, you need four sprigs of rosemary. It's an aromatic, and it really is. It smells really good, and it's going to give some flavor, some pop to that chicken. If you don't know where to find ro fresh rosemary in the grocery store, you can find it um, with all the vegetables. Mm -hmm. There's a special little section, usually where you see parsley, big bundles of parsley, and loose lettuce and that kind of stuff they'll have fresh herbs there as well what makes it loose lettuce like like loose leaf lettuce instead of bundles of lettuce instead of um the head of lettuce like the iceberg lettuce i didn't know the mold lettuce i think they do my grocery store they do huh. i think i just learned something new i might such a thing as loose lettuce out there people watch out for loose lettuce that and loose women so. That goes on to a story about me and Addie going out on a daddy-daughter date to a restaurant and there was a sign that said beware of pickpockets and loose women and I had to sit there and listen to my daughter ask me very loudly, Daddy, what's a loose woman? <laughs> that was something very fun to explain to a five-year-old. But you, <laughs> let's go on. You also need, like I said, the four, or I'm sorry, the two quartered up carrots. You want some salt, you want some pepper, you want some poultry seasoning, and you want some sherry. This is one half cup of cooking sherry. It smells very, very good. This is a cooking wine. If y'all don't want to use wine, you could use a half cup of chicken broth. It'll taste just as good. It'll taste a little different than this. The sherry, again, along with the rosemary and all the other flavors in here is just going to add a huge pop to it. But all you want to do is take your rinsed taters, toss them in the bottom of your slow cooker, and then take your chopped up carrots, your bag of carrots, however you do your carrots. Again, I'm doing this the easy way. These are already washed, ready to go. Take it out of the bag. See how safe this is? Watch this. 
Good to go. And put that over the top of your carrots, your potatoes. You want to take your onions and leave them in quarters. As they cook, they're going to fall apart when you spoon into them. Right in on top of your veggies. A little salt, a little pepper. A little pepper first. This is a lot of veggies, so I'm going to add a lot of pepper. And again, it's a lot of veggies, a lot of taters to soak up all that salt. So I'm going to go liberal with my salt. If you don't want to use that much salt, don't. And then your sherry. I love sherry. Mm. You know, we have a friend whose name is Sherry. She's also known as the Queen of Free. You can check her out at thequeenoffree.net. She does a lot of money saving stuff. And she's even sweeter than that Sherry. We love her to death, don't we? Yes. All right. Now we got the mushy stuff out of the way. We have our veggies in there with our salt and our pepper and our Sherry. And then just take your chicken, lay it right on top of your veggies. Just like that. Your veggies are covered. Next thing you do is wash your hands. You just handle raw chicken. Yes, my sink is full. <laughs> I have some dishes to do. I have been cleaning all, or while cooking all day. I've not been cleaning all day. Having confession, guys. I don't know if you know this about me or not, but I don't like to clean. <laughs> so now what I'm going to do is take some more pepper over the top of my chicken. A little bit more salt over the top of the chicken. I like mine salty. And I'm going to take some poultry seasoning. This is all to taste. This is a Penzi seasoning. Sorry, I got the hiccups just now. This is a Penzi seasoning. Ooh, we're, ooh, we're almost out and I just did that. Don't do that, especially if you're almost out. I'm just going to... There we go. There's one little piece in there that might be a little bit more poultry than most. <laughs> That's there. all right. All right. And before I touch the rest of that, I'm going to wash my hands one more time because it is just the chicken. If you touch raw chicken, wash your hands. Most most poultry seasonings are a combination of ground, rosemary, thyme, savory, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. The kinds of things you think of when you think of stuffing or dressing. Just that smell. That mm -hmm. I can smell the that, thyme in the it. The woodsy smell. And then... For added... Just take your rosemary and lay it on top. Hell Caesar! <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Alright, so now I'm going to take... Now this is the first time I've used a slow cooker, so I'm hoping I'm doing it right. You just lay it on top like that? You just lay it on top, and you can actually lock this one while it cooks. Just like there that. There you go. On low, four, three, I'm sorry, five to, six five to eight hours, depending on your slow cooker. And how much chicken? Like that much chicken? That much chicken, I probably hours. wouldn't do more than three hours, three and a half. You come check it in three, and I'm betting it's probably going to be done. Um, and let's say that it is, and your veggies are still a little hard, what would you do? You could take your, you could take your chicken out and put it on a plate and cover it with foil. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if your veggies aren't done within an hour, <laughs> I told you you'd like it. It's got wings. <laughs> <laughs> if your veggies aren't done within an hour uh, or so, I, I would say then maybe throw your chicken back in there and let it cook for another 30 minutes. Oh. But I would say most likely... Most likely, your chicken and your, well, I've never had it where my chicken and my vegetables weren't done at the same time. Okay. So, I would say even with that you know, chicken in there, we let this one cook for five hours and everything was fine. So, cook it for five hours, um, and then if you have a lot of chicken in there, it could probably go up to six, seven hours. Okay, just make sure your chicken is done. Cut into one of the right. pieces and make sure that there's no pink in the middle. And your chicken's done. Yeah. And this 
is what it comes out looking like. I made this earlier today for a quickie video. So you've already taken the sprigs out. Yes, so. the sprigs are out of there. Don't eat the sprigs. Yeah. Unless you're real hardcore for rosemary, but ugh. No. Look at that. There's some chicken and look at them taters. Onion and carrots. Everything should be super tender. Yep, look at that right here. One meal on a plate. Took me two spoons to do it, two spoonfuls to do it. And you can always go back for seconds. But I'm gonna take me a piece of this chicken along with, let's get some onion. Let's see if I can get some of all of this on there. Might cut me a tater in half. Some of that, some of that. <laughs> some of that and some of that. <laughs> that's home cooking that's this is one of those recipes that's great for people who are looking to cook with whole foods meaning mm -hmm. not food not processed ingredients mm -hmm. and so everything except for the poultry seasoning which you could ultimately skip if you really were hardcore or you could make your own um are yeah. You know, the chicken, the potatoes, the carrots themselves, and the onion. It all has so much flavor just from those rosemary sprigs add a lot. It does. It adds a, I mean, it's, it makes your house smell so mm -hmm. good. Um, but then you've also got the flavors of the poultry season that soak into the chicken. Um, all those juices from the chicken going down into the veggies, everything kind of melds together. The, the, um, the carrots are soft, but the potatoes are soft as well. The onions are cooked all the way through. You can't really see it, I don't think, on camera, but they're kind of clear, kind of opaque, um, it's kind of see-through. Sure, the onions have cooked, but there's still just a little bit of a crunch that goes with the onions. And they're sweet, along with the sweetness of the, of the uh, carrots, you know, and then you get that hardiness of the, the potatoes in there. That is, that is a one-pot dinner that is super super easy. You saw how easy it was for me to make this. And the sherry, it just gives it a flavor. You don't taste the alcohol in it at all. The alcohol is pretty much cooked out of it. But you get that that sweet wine flavor that goes along with it. It just complements it really well. So all right. And if you if you have trouble getting kiddos to eat their vegetables, just put some ketchup on the plate and Addie eats it right up. She yeah. loves all the vegetables. She's always been that way. She never was much for vegetables, but if you put just a dab of ketchup with it, she'll just Yep. Eat them right up. Yeah. But you saw some of that was to make that took maybe five minutes to put together, and in about three, four hours, depending on how much chicken you're using, you've got dinner. You've got dinner for a lot of people. That's seven pieces of chicken that would easily feed seven people. If you don't have seven people in your family and you're going to make this, <laughs> I'll come over and I'll bring my family and we will have dinner together. And I hope it's this because it's really, really good. We want to thank you for watching another episode of Cooking Chris's Dishes with the Good Old Boy. And if you like what you saw and you have not become a member of the Croc Posse, then just simply go down below where it says subscribe and subscribe to this channel and you will already be a member, a valued family member of the Croc Posse. Also check us out over at Facebook at Recipes That Croc, on Instagram at Recipes That Croc, and on Twitter at Recipes Croc. And, uh, you keep watching and we'll keep cooking and all will be well. Bye.